So what made you decide to write or tell the story through non source chi? So I, uh, you know, I've always thought to myself, our country is not doing well as we would want it to. So, but how can you, what can you do on your own part as a writer or as a musician or as an artist to try and prop it up? And, and I've always thought, okay, they are, there are people in other traditions, uh, say Western tradition, for instance, who have taken the substantial articles of their culture, or of the, of the religion of that culture, and written novels through that. You know, you have John Milton's Paradise Lost, or Dan Shea's Inferno, for instance, the, the idea of hell, you know. And, and you know, so, so uh, Paradise Lost is about the fall of man, the mythology of, of the world, of, of, uh, of conception of the world and, and coming into being. And Dan Shea is about hell, the afterlife and all that. So I've always been fascinated with the Chi because it's at the core of the world belief, you know, system or worldview. So I, I, I've always wanted to do that. And then, uh, but when, once I encountered this guy in Cyprus, who whose story uh, mirrors that of Chinonso, you know, a guy who was lied to and duped, and then he goes to Cyprus and dies. Uh, that was, this was in 2010. I thought, okay, how about his chi who knows him more than anybody else, who can tell his story before he was born? So there's a chapter in the novel where the chi goes uh, back into you know, when it first began to guide Chinon. So that was when they were like, you know, in, in the version of heaven. So, so I wanted to, to tell the story that way so that I will be able to tell the complete story of this individual, you know, beyond the scope of what a traditional first person or third person narrator would have allowed. That's very, very interesting, yeah. especially in relation to the fishermen, because in another interview I heard you say that you would like the fishermen to be read as an allegory for the state yeah. of Nigeria. So, and I was wondering um, how much social and political commentary mm -hmm. you wanted to include in an orchestra of minorities, or how much you wanted us to understand right. from it. There is, it, it, it even does more, but in, in the fishermen, the what you would see would be the way in which so the brothers were living together uh, they had aspirations just like any other children you know I want to be a lawyer I want to be a daughter and uh, you know and all that until uh, you know they encounter this guy so in the Yoruba culture and, and, and not just your back culture, actually, Igbo uh, and all parts of Nigeria. If, if a character comes in, if somebody comes in now, as we're holding this meeting, and just badges in, the instinctive response would be to call the person a mad person. Mad man, you know, wary, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, so uh, that's you know so the, the being mad goes beyond just like mental illness or anything like that so so that's where the allegory comes from <laughs> yes we're not technologically advanced but we you know these different entities were doing well in their own way my dad will always say uh, it was unheard of in pre-colonial Igbo land that somebody will be will not have a place to, to, to sleep, will not have food to eat, you know. Everybody had a house, everybody had food at, at the bare minimum. But now you have that situation in Nigeria. <laughs> so the disruption was because of that external force. So, but orchestra covers even more ground because it's talking about a civilization and it's in some ways a lamentation of you know, it takes even further what uh, the fishermen and things fall apart did. Things fall apart was actually been looking at that moment when the British came and then, you know, clashed with the civilization and destroyed it. Uh, but the uh, orchestra takes it to a, a more 
metaphysical dimension let us now look at the religion what was actually destroyed in the culture the system of government uh so so and then we're putting it in we're setting it in the present time so there's more time to have evaluated how these things have happened now nigerians uh, scam each other they destroy the lives of others uh, you know governmental people steal everything you know so uh, and then even when we go to some of these countries we're treated very badly you know that was the situation uh, in Cyprus uh, you know you heard of uh, slavery in Libya mm -hmm. for instance in Middle Eastern countries uh, you know the way they treat and uh, you know some sometimes you you have to also have some perspectives uh, these people are not wanted in their countries, you know, so so uh, Because of that, you know, people just I saw some very bad things in Cyprus. So of course it's uh, a, a kind of uh, political commentary on uh, You know international racism in the way in which uh, Immigration or immigrants are treated in some places. Yeah